Good morning. Good morning. Our processional hymn is number 376. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Please stand. Day of the church today, not just George Hardy. <laughs> For those of you who are at home, we're on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day, you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you called your faithful servant Boniface to be a witness and martyr in Germany, and by his labor and suffering, you raised up a people for your own possession. Pour upon your Holy Spirit upon your church in every land, and in particular our community of St. Boniface in Sarasota, that by the service and sacrifice of many, your holy name may be glorified and your kingdom enlarged through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as they migrated from the east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and butamen for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built. And the Lord said, look, they are one people and they have one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. The word of the Lord. We'll read Canticle 13 in unison. Glory to you, Lord God, our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will, we will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this second, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each of them heard speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? 
Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, and residents from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phygari and Pamphylia, Egypt and other parts of Libya belonging to Serene and other visitors of Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Ab Arabs, and in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sequence hymn is number 238, Blessed Feast of Blessed Martyrs. Please stand. <laughs> Jesus Christ according to John. Lord, On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. The Gospel of the Lord. Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our dear Linda has uh, shingles. Oh. And they're at a contagious place, so she has five days of isolation from everything. Fortunately, she is... Uh, it's only in the itching. She's in the itching phase. <laughs> Poor thing. It's been a busy week, to say the least. Today we're going to talk about faith and fear. Faith and fear. We have this beautiful candle, this Paschal candle, that has been lighted, and it will be extinguished today. Michael will extinguish it at the end of the service. And this candle symbolizes the presence of Christ among us before the giving of the Holy Spirit. So on Pentecost, what is Pentecost? What is, how many days after Easter is it? 50. They were told to go into an upper room. 
They went up to an upper room that they were familiar with. It was probably the same room that John Mark guarded them, guided them to to have the last meal together, the Last Supper, a familiar place. And so they waited, and they waited, and they waited. I'm not very patient, but I have a bathroom, and I have air conditioning, and I have refrigeration. <laughs> I didn't have refrigeration part of my vacation, but I got refrigeration now. And I was impatient for four days. I can't imagine 50 days of being with people who have not bathed, who are afraid, who don't even like each other, who don't agree what's happening and what's been going before them. They didn't speak the same language. Some of them, some of them had different ideas as to who Jesus was and where he was. They all knew they loved him and he had given them purpose and they were told what to do, and in faith they began to stay in that upper room. Now in that upper room was his mother, Jesus' mother, his siblings, yes, his siblings, the girls and the boys, his, uh, Mary's other children, all of those who had been called by Jesus to participate in the mission. And they to he told them to wait. I want you to think about some times that you've been afraid. When you left home, maybe, and weren't quite sure that what you'd been talking about would be a reality. Talk big when you're a teenager of what you're going to do and what you're going to be and, and how different you're going to live your life than your parents. And when you've had a failed relationship and your identity has been tied up with someone else. It's a death. Or where there's a death. When you've retired and all of a sudden nobody calls you on the telephone anymore asking your advice. Nobody needs you to be anywhere. And nobody really cares to hear the stories. So here we are, 50 days out. They had been told for three years that they needed to be prepared for their role in the mission of the faith. Did they believe him? No. They thought he'd always be there. After all, he was 30. And then there was the critical moment of the crucifixion, where they all ran off, except Nicodemus, John, Mary Magdalene, and his mother. And then there were the appearances. And then, because of Judas's betrayal, they had to fulfill the twelfth spot. Twelve was a very important number. And so Matthias was brought into the story, and he, of course, is a cobbler. His children probably never had a pair of shoes after he joined the band, because he was busy. These people and their families had given up everything that they had known, everything that they had dreamed of, and they were now facing in midlife the possibility of a terrible failure. Because nothing was happening on day 31. Day 35. Day 40. Now, what kind of things do you think, kind of bickering do you think was going on? <laughs> I use the term bickering, it was probably they were probably uh, some knockdown drag outs because remember when there's an absence of leadership everyone vies for power it doesn't matter if you're talking about the first century or the 21st century when there's an absence of leadership people vie for power so there they all are Jesus has said Peter was going to be the head of the church well how do you think James felt Jesus' brother he may have come to the faith late in life but he wasn't going to give up the stake in the family business. No, he wasn't. He became the Bishop of Jerusalem, the other powerful city in the church. But they had conversations and arguments. Now, one of the things that we, we think we know we do, but we probably don't, is when we have a disagreement with somebody, we think that we are 
just discussing this and bringing the point to the table, not thinking of conversion. But most of us deep down want to convert the other person into what we're thinking. And we get louder and louder and louder. So here we have people who think you have to be circumcised. People believe you don't have to be circumcised. People who had all kinds of versions of who John the Baptist was in the relationship to what was happening then and what in the world they were going to do now because the Roman soldiers were out there and they were in harm's way. They were marked people. No refrigeration, no bathrooms, no air conditioning. What happens when you're afraid? Do you speak from your strengths? Maybe in your head, but you always go back to an emotional position, don't you? If you're not careful and don't guide yourself and guard against these things happening, you have a tendency to have a knee-jerk reaction. Jesus said, I will not leave you alone. I will not leave you alone. And he was very intentional about saying that. He was drawing us back to the book of Joshua. Chapter 1, verse 9, I will never leave you alone, God said. Well, here we are, day 43, day 45, day 47. They're getting antsy. Not only that, there is guilt involved. If you've ever participated in an accident, those who are left behind are the ones who are suffering, not the deceased. They've gone to live with our Lord. The guilt about the pain that's been imposed upon other people by the accident. There's Mary. There's Mary. She's only about 45 years old. Anybody in here 45? <laughs> no. I don't know any. Michael isn't 45 yet. <laughs> Kevin's 45, I bet. Dan, are you over 45? Yes. <laughs> oh, well. We remember 45, don't we? We can still remember 45, I hope. Anyway, at least today we can. So here we are with this young widow who's never married again. We have her children, Jesus' relatives. We have the families of John the Baptist and all of those who've been around. Now, one of the things that I would have thought if I was living in the first century, well, if I am the beloved of the Redeemer, if Jesus is the Messiah of God, then nothing is going to harm me. God will protect me in this life. Well, do we all know that that isn't true? Yes, we know that isn't true. Because you become a believer doesn't mean life isn't going to happen to you. It means that you're not going to walk the path alone and you will never die. You will be returned to the Father. The relationship shifts back to what it was before we were here. So here we are in the upper room, and people are starting to act out their fear. The church has sacraments for a reason. Outward and visible signs to help us remember to whom we belong. Physical, tangible things. The taste, the touch, the oils, the water. And every week, because we are simple people, we are reminded so we're not afraid and that we trust. We come here to be fed and to fill our spirit to go out and share this message that every child of God has value and they're not alone. So the birthday of the church is about you and me coming of age. Time to show up as a grown-up. And then what happened to give us that confidence? People who had power struggles, people who had ideas that, that were my ideas and therefore I'm going to impose them upon you, all of a sudden began to understand each other and could communicate. There are two things in a marriage that are primary, communication, issues, and money, because it's about power. In that room, there were no power struggles. That's where they could understand each other. It was not personal agenda. It was God's agenda, and they began to see that the world was bigger than whether or not I agree with you or whether I get it. And here we are in the 21st century. We're still struggling with that same problem, aren't we? 
if you don't agree with me, there's something wrong with you. Because of course I have the mind of God as to the way the life is supposed to be. And of course you can't because I have it. Americans are big at that. And everyone who has ever had power is not real keen on giving it up to somebody else. Are they? Every power struggle in history is about someone being afraid someone's taking something away from them and they don't know what their place is. We pick any issue, it's the same thing throughout history. It's obvious, it's so obvious. But if we have a common understanding that Jesus is the way, the truth, and life, and God the Father will take care of us, and our job is to take care of creation and to love our Lord with all of our heart, mind, and soul, we come to the table and are nourished in truth, in faith, to go out into the world so others can hear this great message of salvation and what the sacrifice was all about. The flame of the fire, the energy of the room, Look at this. You know, you wonder what Jesus would have thought of some of this, don't you? <laughs> I, you don't know what quite how hard it was for Jean to get these balloons. She had to go all over the place because of, their gra of graduation. <laughs> and here we are, you know, red masks. I'm, I'm telling you, I don't know how the Lord, I'm, I'm, I'd have given up on us a long time ago, really. <laughs> but if it helps you and me to get it, that it's more than about ourselves. It's about love. It's about being nourished with the sacrament and to go out into the world, to go out and do better. This is a triage. What happened in MASH? Did they fix people or did they pass them to a point where they could go really get the deep help they needed? That's what a triage does. We fix you up so the emergency room. This is the emergency room. So you don't forget to whom you belong, what your job is in life, and to be gracious about the gift that's been given you that you don't want to keep it to yourself. So here these guys and gals are up in this room, and now at the birthday of the church, it's time to grow up. Take that faith, put fear in their pocket, and never let it dominate them again. We sang that wonderful song that I love, the hymn about faithful martyrs. They've all gone home. They're, felicity, they don't, have, they don't need us. They have completed their task in this life. They've done their best. And that's all God asks of us, to do our very best. Buddy, how many families did we feed? In family, 310. 310 human beings. We can't solve the problem of hunger <laughs> of the world but we can take care of people in our own backyard. We have 44 little children in our school who feel loved, who feel valued, and feel safe. They are seeing the love of Jesus manifest in this place. All of this undergirds the message of go forth, make disciples of all people, and blow up the balloons once in a while. You know, wear the red mask and have a little fun. Because you know, every day doesn't have to be that serious. It can be fun too. So today we say happy birthday. We pay attention to the things that make us frightened, just as they did in that upper room. And we're gonna change the world, you and I, one person at a time, by the way in which we are able to share that love. So happy birthday. Happy birthday. There you go. Thank mm -hmm. you.
invite you to stand and join with me as we respond by the Nicene Creed found on page 358, our profession of faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people, form four. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and re reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share all of, with all of our saint, your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy.
for our friends at home, we are in Eucharistic Prayer C. We are on page 369. We offer the Holy Eucharist in grateful thanksgiving for the life, witness, and salvation offered to us through Jesus Christ. And we also remember St. Boniface this day. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxy, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you, and we betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he Therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. according to your comfort level. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. The night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. Lord God of our fathers and our mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. 
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we're bold to say, Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Upon you. 
first communion hymn is number 304, I Come With Joy. We will sing verses 1 through 3 and 5. <laughs> And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Please be seated. First, I want to tell everyone, uh, uh, I'm feeling fine. I go to the beauty school, and the little girl who's 18 said, I cut your hair too short. And I said, it'll grow. <laughs> so I'm not ill. It's sort of kind of fun, really, because I get to see what the guys are like, because, you know, they don't have all this business to worry about in this humidity. It is a first world problem, and I don't look in the mirror anyway, so uh, most of the time, so I'm okay. In about three weeks, it'll look great. <laughs> first world problem. Uh, for those who don't remember Bill Clarkson, he's one of our faithful who used to sit in the back corner. He had his 98th birthday this weekend. And what I would like us to do is bring some cards, and I will go see him after next Sunday and take those cards to him. He's not really receiving guests yet. But we're, uh, I talked to the son yesterday, and I will uh, take the cards over there. And um, he's feeling pretty good, his memory shot. He has a hearing aid now that seems to work, which is getting him more connected with reality. So if you'd like to have a card sent, bring it over, mail it to us here. I will go in another week after next Sunday to go see Bill and take the cards of love. We have a card in the parish hall for uh, Bruce Wilson. Who has, uh, who's still in bed, can't put any weight on his foot or his leg. He had hip 
uh, infection in the hip surgery he had had done several years ago, and they had to open him up and scrape it and do a lot of things that you and I don't want to know about. And they will have to test in three weeks to see whether or not uh, what they did was worked or they have another horrible thing they have to do. But they watch us on the tube. Happy birthday, Bruce. And you want to sign the card that we will get to him in all of this. And let's see what else. Our wonderful Connie Oline has died. She used to sit over there towards on the end, over there, right there. Um, and we are having a funeral here for her, full blood, you know, be an Episcopal event. She would be placed in the garden. Her father is already there, and she and, and her husband will be there next to And um, the memorials will be made to St. Wilfred, in particular, for the ongoing work of the garden. And uh, so July 9th, 11 o'clock, Bill is going to play. It's going to be fabulous. It's going to be wonderful, and so forth. Now, the fun stuff is about to begin. Um, we have young people here who are the fourth generation of individuals in, who will, I hope, someday, not soon, but someday, be out in the garden with 11 members of their family. They're already there. Um, and so um, the grandchildren of Buddy and Virginia are going to help us dig the hole, put the time capsule in it, and uh, they have been equipped with some important uniforms <laughs> and Frankie ha gets to carry the, ca the uh, capsule and Bliss gets this fabulous girl's fabulous vest to wear and we're going to have a little fun but we're going to have the fun after we sing uh, the recessional hymn which is my seminary hymn in English no, no Latin <laughs> want you to appreciate that but we will sing all five verses of it um, Anybody else have anything they need to ask or say? We got a card in the parish hall. Uh, we have the funeral the ninth. Please pray for um, Dane and Aileen. They're the couple that we see always dancing at our events. Dane is in the hospital. He's got an infection right near his carotid, and they're trying to figure out three surgeons in the state of Florida can help. There are no beds. So we need to pray fervently for their recovery. And of course, we pray for our Linda, who's in trouble. Yes, George. Uh, George, that's about it. Bill. Yes, go for it. Just don't forget, uh, as soon as service is over, when the garden is done, please meet us in the fellowship hall. We're having a fun taco bar over there, and we've got some great desserts. And uh, the other thing I want to ask is on the 3rd of July, just keep this in the back of your head here, Bring. we're going to have an old-fashioned barbecue, and we're going to ask you to bring your favorite 4th of July dessert that day. Okay, so we're going to have a dessert extravaganza that day. And then the last thing is the choir room. So as you're going back to the bathrooms and, and things like that, Mother Joyce had talked today in her sermon uh, about working and the growth. And, and uh, when you pass that room, what I'd like you to do is just put your hand on that, that door, that wall, and just say a prayer that we are going to grow this church, but we're also going to grow a choir. And what, we're, what our prayer is, is I, I have nine chairs set up in the choir stand. So I'm renovating the choir room. We're going to bring it up to 2022. It's going to look fun. It's going to look exciting. So our prayer, when you pass to go to the bathrooms, just your hand and just a little prayer. Please, God, help us. OK, thank you. <laughs> Chris, we just wanted to mention about George's 97th birthday coming up this week. Wow. I worked hard. I, I thought we just did, but okay, maybe I didn't hear it. We just didn't hear it. He's going to be 97 and he didn't want to come up for a blessing because guess what? He is blessing us. We don't need to bless him. <laughs> Fifty-nine. 